Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Trouble is looming in the Ruto cabinet. And this is because William Ruto has given an instruction that moving forward, cabinet secretaries who want to make statements must confirm with state house first before they release any statement. And sources indicate that in the recent past, some members of the cabinets have been making statements that according to State House, the statements are giving the opposition a leeway to start criticizing the government. And an example was given when the governor, the, the, the treasury CS Njugunandungu, indicated to the nation that the economic situation was dire to an extent that they would not be able to pay government staff. A few days later, after those statements, when William Ruto was giving a speech during the Jamhuri Day, William Ruto said that Kenya was safe and that we are out of uh, debt. In fact, he was saying that the policies of cutting expenditure and raising revenue are paying off. And it's, it's, it, it's observed that he was not happy about the statements that were made before him that the, 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 the economic situation was that harsh. And instructions have been given that any time a cabinet secretary wants to to release any press statement, they should confirm first with State House and that everything must be pegged on the previous regime. And you have seen a kind of, in fact, let me give you just an example. The way they, 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 they are trying to defend this government. The other day, when we had a series of blackouts at JKIA, Murkoman said, that some of the generators are not working. And when people criticized Murkomen, including the Nandi Senator Samson Chiragai, the Deputy President defended Murkomen and he said that the generators were bought at exorbitant prices and they are faulty. Notwithstanding the fact that the generators had been working for the 10 years that Uhuru was in power, they only became faulty recently after one year into power, after William Ruto got into the office. Now, did you realize that even the, 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 the controller of budget, Nyakango, is facing an opposition from the government and her recent arrest and, and arraignment in court was actually thought to be the fact that she has been criticizing the government. She told the government against the, 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 the tax policies and the debts that we are acquiring and even said that if we cannot attach the loans to very tangible programs and projects, then seems like there's a problem. She even said that some government staffs are exaggerating and inflating uh, salaries of other government officials so that they can gain from it. And with that, you know, she became an enemy of this government. So it is very clear that the government does not want anyone that is criticizing the government. If you are a government official, the instructions are very simple. Say something that will be pleasant to the ears of Kenyans. Say something that will not give the opposition anything to talk about. Recently, the senator of Nyeri indicated that he wanted Murko, in fact, he wanted Davis Churchill, who is the energy minister, to be sacked. And he was very particular about that. A few hours later, he went to tweet his Twitter handle and said that he did not mean to say that David Churchill 
should be kicked out of that docket. And this tells you exactly what is happening in the government. It is as if we are blind because we, we, we can see everything that is happening even if it is not said by, by any cabinet secretary, then we will still know it because we, we are not, there are very many Kenyans who are, you know, who study the, 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 the economics uh, of how the, the, the Kenyan economy is running and they understand. There are laymen who will just see that things are not the way they're supposed to be. And the government is so much concerned about who is relieving, who is revealing the corruption cases to the opposition. Because recently you've heard Raila talk about the G2G petrol you know, deal. And the government is really worried who is leaking the information. And they feel that if the cabinet secretaries could be very minimal with the truth, then at least this can hide some of the facts from the opposition. But there are very many other concerned Kenyans who will not keep quiet because no one is happy about the economic situation. Let us have those facts. No one is happy about what is going on. And there are people who are really pissed off about the, 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 the corruption that is going on in the country. But there is seemingly, in fact, a problem. You realize that the other day, when the director of meteorological department, Mr. David Gikungu, warned that we were to prepare for the El Nino rains, William Ruto himself came out and said that they had prayed and God had answered the prayers that there would be no El Nino anymore. We would have some rains, but it was not going to be El Nino. After those statements, I think some of uh, government officials who had been in, in, in custody of the Nino uh, pre preparation and the money that was kept, I think some of it was misused only to realize, as they say, that all of a sudden, boom, the Nino rains started. And then that's how the, we started now, the, you know, the disaster, uh, the disaster management department started, you know, getting some very impromptu meetings. Gadiga Shagwa, I think, is in charge of the disaster management. And he was convening several meetings. You even realized that it was an altercation. It led to an altercation between him and the governor of Mombasa, where he was trying to lie to them that they had released some money and the governor did not want to buy food. Now, the funniest part of it is that after those statements, it was David who was forced to apologize to Kenyans. Yet, he had indicated very clearly that according to the observations and the statistics that they had, El Nino rain were looming. The person who was supposed to actually apologize was supposed to be the president, but he was forced to apologize on his behalf. We have a president who is really micromanaging these people. He has always gone outside the country trying to look for even domestic jobs for our Kenyans. Yet we have ambassadors in the countries where he goes, we have consulate offices, we have trade minister, and you wonder why do we pay people in those departments? Why do we have ministers or cabinet secretaries, ambassadors? If the president still doubles up and goes to negotiate for such jobs, today he was telling us that he has uh, acquired 2,500 2, jobs to, to, in fact, doctors are supposed to be going to visit United Arab Emirates or Dubai, something in those Gulf countries, which is not bad. But people are wondering when then will the cabinet secretaries work? What is their role? Doesn't he trust them? And the answer, I think, is very clear. Some of these uh, operations really need a lot of deals. For example, the one of Churchill and Murkowen. And so not everyone is allowed to get his nose into such deals. I think only the most trusted, the, the, the closest allies are supposed. Otherwise, he would love to do everything for himself. 
so that if there is any deal, I think they will take it. And I think they, that there's an economic, that, that there is this mileage, political mileage, that the president would always want to take, so that it is not said that the deal was procured, maybe if it is uh, some jobs, he would not want any minister, any cabinet secretary, to say that he was the one who, who signed the deal. Maybe you can only sign after he has announced that he is the one who negotiated for that deal. And that is why he wants to do everything. But giving instructions to cabinet secretaries not to make any statements concerning the economy, concerning things like insecurity, I think it is very wrong. Because then we are, we are giving them, them a job and tying their hands so that we are limiting them. If the government is serious about fighting corruption, if the government is serious about, you know, you know, resuscitating the economy, they should not shy off from giving cabinet secretaries authority to speak about whatever is happening in their departments. Kenyans cannot be fooled all the time. When you tell us that you have stabilized the economy, what are the indicators? We still have unemployment rate. The basic commodities have got their prices skyrocketing. You know very well that even the, all the, the prices of petrol and oil products that were reduced, were those are mere jokes because it was not commensurate to the prices, the prevailing prices in the, in the, in the global market. And so we are just being duped. Fear cannot solve our problems. The government understands very well that Kenyans know what is happening. Fear alone will not help. In fact, fear can make them make very disparate situations. Things like now start arresting people, those who speak about it. Let them sit down with the think tanks and see what they can do about the economy. Because from where I sit, they are unable at all to govern. To resuscitate our economy. The economic growth that they are talking about, if you ask me, is on a down, uh, is, is downgrading. It is on a downward trend. Let us be honest with our people. Let us see what is happening in, 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 in the neighboring country. In fact, the neighboring countries are really mocking us because they know our problem. Our problem, as I finish, is this very deep dalliance with the Western powers. There isn't any economy that has grown when it is being controlled by the IMF and the World Bank. If there is one, please educate me. Share with me if you know any world economy, any nation that has recorded or registered an economic growth when they are being controlled by IMF or the World Bank. And that is my take.